Good evening, exiles, and welcome to the Path of Exile version 2.00 audiobook presented by me. Prologue. Important notes. Due to substantial balance changes, every existing character has been granted an optional full passive reset. To use this, click the Reset All Passes button on the passive skill screen. Note that you must use this before allocating or refunding any other points. Otherwise, the option will go away. Many inactive characters' names have been made available. If you take the name of an existing character, then that user will be prompted to rename their character when they later try to log into it. If you have logged onto any character in your account in the last year, then their names cannot be taken. Characters whose names are not taken are not lost. Their progress and items are still intact. They just need to pick up a new name when they log in. We recommend you create your first character, new character in the Warbands or Tempest Challenge League to experience The Awakening. The entire game experience has changed from the first level onwards. Chapter 1. Expansion Content. Act 4. Highgate. The Betrayer strives to awaken an ancient and terrible being. Should he succeed, the Cataclysm see, will see the whole world remade in the image of Nightmare. The time has finally come to venture into the kingdom of corruption itself and drive a blade through its black heart. The Awakening introduces Path of Exile's fourth act, which is set in and around the mining town of Highgate, north of Sarn. Act 4 contains 14 new areas to explore, 40 new monster varieties to fight, 6 new quests to complete, and 9 new bosses to defeat. Highgate contains a cast of new NPCs that have full voice acting. Jewel System Path of Exile the Awakening introduces an entirely new type of item to collect and craft, jewels. These socket into the passive tree to grant special bonuses to your character or influence area so around of the tree itself. The passive skill tree has been updated with 21 sockets for jewels. You must allocate a socket like a regular passive skill before you can put a jewel into it. Jewels can drop as magic, rare, or unique. Unnoted here, but they cannot drop as normal. Like other unique items in Path of Exile, unique jewels are powerful and build-defining. They offer ways to, like, to diversify your areas of specialization, or to double down on a strategy that is working well for your build. Some unique jewels interact with passive skills and radius around them, either changing their properties, triggering when certain thresholds are met, or altering the rules of the tree itself. A quest in Act 2 offers you a different selection of unique jewels to choose from in each difficulty level. Magic and rare jewels can be crafted using the same set of orbs that affect other items in Path of Exile by re-rolling or modifying your jewels. You're able to essentially create your own notable passives, some of which can be substantially more powerful than those offered by the tree itself. Netcode Improvements Added an option for deterministic lockstep as a networking mode. This mode doesn't desync, but there's a short delay, your latency to the server, before you see your actions execute. This mode should be used if you have a low latency to the nearest server. Lockstep is automatically enabled if you're close enough to one of our servers. You can toggle this option. You can toggle this in the options panel. We've added new servers in London, Frankfurt, Italy, California, and Washington DC. The latency to each server is shown on the login screen to help you select the closest one. We have substantially improved the regular predictive sync mode. Introducing Divination Cards. Divination Cards are a new type of item that drop throughout a ray class. Each type of card is desired is specific to different areas. They allow players to systemically work their way into the acquisition of desirable items without having to rely on random chance alone. A full stack of one type of divination card can be traded to the Tessuni NPC in Highgate for the specific item referenced on the card. All divination cards introduced in the Awakening have been designed by Highgate supporters. There are 49 initial cards in the first release. More will be added over time. Meraketh Weapons We've introduced 13 new Meraketh weapon types in three tiers, 39 total base types. Act 4 isn't set in the Meraketh lands, but the Meraketh people were involved in many historical battles that occurred there. Meraketh weapons have different implicit mods that most of the items in, like, oh, 
Pair them some different implicit mods in most of the items in Path of Exile. The implicit mod is the same for the first two tiers, and slightly larger in the third tier. While Mariketh weapons are some of the rarest, most desirable weapons in the game, they don't deal substantially more damage than the highest current base types. However, their new implicit mods make them more appropriate for certain builds. All of the Mariketh weapons have new 3D art and look quite different from existing weapons in Path of Exile. At this stage, we do not plan to introduce unique versions of Mariketh weapons. New unique items. We've added 119 uniques to Path of Exile. Four unique items for the Tempest League, nine unique items for the Warband League, 58 unique jewels, 31 unique items created by our designers, 16 unique items created, designed by supporters, and one unique strongbox designed by a supporter. New skill gems. Added a new strength skill gem, Abyssal Cry. Performs a war cry, slowing nearby enemies and causing them to explode when killed. The slowing effect is increased by surrounding enemies. Taunts all nearby enemies to attack the user and shares a cooldown with other Warcry skills. Added a new Strength skill gem, Rallying Cry, performs a war cry, granting increased damage and mana regeneration to you and your allies if, they, if there are nearby enemies. The damage increase is scaled by surrounding enemies. Taunts all nearby enemies to attack the user. Shares a cooldown with other Warcry skills. Added a new Intelligence skill gem, Summon Chaos Golem. Add a new Strength Intelligence skill gem. Summon Flame Golem. A new Dex Intelligence skill gem. Summon Ice Golem. All of these will summon a Golem. Added a new Strength Intelligence skill gem. Vigilant Strike. Attacks the enemy with a powerful melee strike. You gain the Fortify buff, granting damage reduction. The cooldown can be bypassed by expending an Endurance Charge. Requires a melee weapon. Add a new Strength Intelligence skill gem, Ice Crash. Slam the ground with your main hand weapon, damaging enemies in an area around the impact in three stages. Enemies take slightly less damage on the second and third stage. Works with swords, maces, axes, staves, and unarmed. Cannot be used with multi-strike. Added a new Intelligence skill gem, Fire Nova Mine. Lay a remote mine that can detonate to create a series of Fire Novas. Each sequential Nova from the same mine will do higher damage than the previous. Added a new Intelligence skill gem, Flame Dash. Teleport to a location, damaging enemies and leaving a trail of burning ground in your wake. Added a new Dex skill gem, Phase Run. Gain a buff that makes you faster, harder to detect, and able to pass through enemies. Performing any skill replaces the buff with one that boosts melee attack damage. Consumes frenzy charges to increase duration. Added new dexterity skill gem, Frost Blades. Attack with increased range, releasing icy blades from the struck enemy that fly at other enemies. Requires a melee weapon. Added new intelligence skill gem, Magma Orb. Lob a fiery orb that explodes as it strikes the ground. The skill chains, releasing another fiery orb that repeats this effect. Add a new dexterity strength skill gem. Wild Strike. Your melee weapon strikes an enemy, converting some of its damage to a random element. Then, depending on the element chosen, it releases an explosion, unarcing both a lightning or an icy wave. Add a new, de a, add a new generic skill gem. Detonate Mines. Detonates all the remote mines you have placed. This gem can be triggered. That's its trigger. New Support Gems. Added a new Strength Support Gem. Fortify. Supported skills deal additional damage and grant you the defensive Fortify buff when they hit. Add a new Strength Support Gem. Bloodlust. Supported skills deal substantially more damage against bleeding enemies, but they can't cause bleeding themselves. Added in Dexterity Intelligence Support Gem, Trap and Mine Damage. Supported Trap and Mines are... Supported Trap and Mine skills are slower to use and deal more damage. Added new Dexterity Support Gem, Ice Bite. Supported skills are more likely to freeze enemies and have a large chance to grant a frenzy charge when killing a frozen enemy. Added new Dexterity Support Gem, Hypothermia. Supported skills deal additional damage against chilled enemies and are more likely to freeze chilled enemies. 
Add a new intelligence support gem, Innervate. Supported skills have additional chance to shock and grant onslaught when you kill a shocked enemy. New Challenge Leagues. Challenge Leagues are a great opportunity for a fresh start in the new economy. All your old characters and items are still present in the standard hardcore leagues, but you're encouraged to join the new leagues, complete with challenges, and climb the ladder. Warbands is the upcoming standard challenge league, and the Warbands League warring clans have spread throughout Rayclast. These warbands are tight-knit groups of enemies who cooperate and use synergistic skills to take you down. At higher levels, elite and leader enemies are present who direct their warband in combat and can take matters into their own hands if the tide of battle turns against them. Each of the three warbands have exclusive unique items that only drop from them. The presence of the warbands in Rayclast fluctuates over time and responds to the Exiles' efforts to hunt them down. There are currently three unique shields, three unique rings, three unique boots, and three exclusive magic mods that can drop from high warband members. Over time, this pool of items will expand as the warbands continue to assert their dominance. Tempest. In Tempest is the upcoming Hardcore Challenge League, in which Ray class is affected by Magical Tempest. These can cause a variety of effects that influence both monsters and players, such as changing their sizes, causing damage, altering drop rates, or even automatically animating weapons that drop. With careful positioning, you can deny monsters from getting positive buffs or lead them into negative ones. When a Tempest affects an area, it does so for everyone in that league for an hour. You can look at the world map to see which Tempests affect each area at, that, at the moment. Some of the rare Tempests grant significant item finding benefits, so are worth keeping a lookout for. The new challenge leagues include a set of eight new challenges. As you complete these challenges, you receive pieces of a Warband's Tempest Totem Pole decoration that can be displayed in your hideout. The Totem Pole permanently displays how many of your Warband slash Tempest League challenges you have completed during these leagues. The eight new challenges are titled Reach Level 82, Redeem Divination Card Sets, Kill These Warband Members, Clear Areas with Tempests, Kill These Unique Bosses, Items from vendor recipes, corrupt these unique jewels, and knowledge and power. The first 50 players to complete all 8 challenges will receive an exclusive Warband slash Tempest Challenge shirt. Out of the 119 total unique items added in this update, there are 9 unique items that can only drop in the Warbands Challenge League, and 4 that can only drop in the Tempest Challenge League. Which leads us into Chapter 2. New features and additional content. New microtransactions, including the Raven Wings, Demon King, the Infernal Throne, a Face Parasite, Steam Powered Wand, the Rock Elemental, Bloodworm, and Firefly Swarm. New features. We've added item filter functionality. You can now filter what types of items you want to see, cause sounds to play, change the font color, size, and other options. For more information about item filters, check out www.paladexile.com slash itemfilters. Change the game camera position. There's a little more gameplay area visible below the character now. Add an option to display an in-game clock. You can now change the window size and font size of the chat window. NPC and player names are now shown on the overlay map and minimap. Party leaders are now shown in blue on the overlay map and minimap. The game's HUD has been updated to the Karubi Stone theme used throughout The Awakening. When you're listening to the lore object, in the world. You can walk away from the lore, and the lore audio will continue to play in the background while you explore. The life and mana orbs now indicate where the current level of regeneration will fill them up to. You can now enable life and mana bars on top of your character. Hovering over the experience bar now shows an estimate of how much experience you're gaining per hour on a recent play. You can now type slash AFK with a message to set a message that is automatically sent to people who contact you. You can type DND with a message to set a message that is automatically sent to people who contact you while in do not disturb mode. In this mode, you are not shown messages you receive. You can now bind a different key other than the one used to show item hovers to be used for key pickup. Item level is now included when pressing Alt while you hover over an item. The latency performance graphs shown when you press F1 have been improved and repositioned. You can now toggle to show just a small latency graph, added an option for disabling the Twitch Enter channel messages. The gateway you're connected to is now shown on the minimap screen alongside other information about the instance like its map mods. This is useful if you're playing with friends overseas. Effects used in boss fights are now loaded at the loading screen of the appropriate level, rather than when you load the game. 
Names of your pets are now shown in your hideout when you're in edit mode, so that they're easier to find if they hide under logs. The camera is now smoothly interpolated between positions while using flicker strike or changing who you are, who you are spectating in a PvP match. When someone travels to your hideout, it now creates the instance on the gateway you're logged into. In chat, you can now press tab as well as enter to complete partial whisper names. New map content. As we raise the level of content in the Awakening, we're introducing a new range of maps and readjusting map area levels to better suit the level we expect most players to start mapping. To coincide with this, we felt we should take a look at the map pool of mod at the pool of map mods that can typically roll and take this opportunity to allow a smoother entry into mapping, as well as a more interesting and challenging pool of mods for high-end maps. We have introduced a new series of maps. You can recognize these by their volcanic Karui stone art, rather than the old grey tablets. The new maps range in level from 68 to 82. Many maps have changed where they fit in the map progression. There are more maps at higher tiers than before. Twelve new maps for the accompanying boss fights have been added. Maps in the new progression have, been rework have a reworked system of map mods. Item rarity and pack size now appear alongside item quantity as benefits that are granted for increasing the difficulty of maps by crafting mods onto them. Map mods on lower tier maps are generally easier than map mods in previous expansions. Mid tier and high tier maps introduce higher values. More challenging mods and scarier combinations of mods that previously weren't allowed to exist. Maps from, old, from the old progression no longer drop. They can be played to find maps from the new progression. Old maps have their old art and mods. Crafting them yields mods from the old progression. Changes to world areas. With the, introdu with the introduction of Act 4, the previous three acts were revamped to provide a more streamlined experience. A lower and upper submerged passage have been combined. The waypoint in Mudflats has been moved to the coast. The waypoint in the lower prison has been moved to be near the start of the level. The cove's area has been reworked, has been removed. The Chamber of Sins level 2 has been replaced by the Chamber of Sins level 3. Its waypoint is now at the start of the new Chamber of Sins level 2. Plague Rich has been moved out of Chamber of Sins level 1 and has been replaced by Black Death. We wish Plague Rich all the best on wherever his new journey takes him. Poor, poor Plague Wretch. The Wetlands area has been moved prior to the Vol Ruins. They now connect to the Riverways. You can now find Oak without having killed Loretta, the tree. A waypoint has been added to the Riverways. The Dark Forest has been removed. The Vol Ruins level 1 and Vol Ruins level 2 have been merged. Its waypoint has been removed. A new area, the Northern Forest, has been added after the Vol Ruins. The Dread Thicket is now attached to the Northern Forest rather than the Wetlands. The Dread Thicket is now always 50%. I don't know what that means. A 50% Dread Thicket. Interesting. The Caverns, Level 1 and the Caverns, Level 2, have been merged. Calersa has been moved into the city of Sarn, from the slums. The slums no longer attaches to the Warehouse District. You can no longer access the Warehouse District or beyond without opening the sewers by finding Tolman and freeing Calarissa. The sewer waterway has been removed. The Marketplace Sewers now has two entrances in the Marketplace. The Marketplace Waypoint has been moved. The Ebony Barracks Waypoint has been moved. Lenaris Temple 1 and Lenaris Level 2 have been merged. The waypoint is now in this merged area. Piety's boss arena in Lonaris 2 has been changed. In addition to the 20 new skill gems introduced in the Awakening, several older skills and supports have been revamped. These new versions replace the old ones, providing a better experience for players who rely on them. All attacks, all attack skills now gain a multiplicative damage increase per gem level, which replaces the additive increase they had previously. Shock Nova now follows up the Ring of Lightning around you with a larger Lightning Nova. Enemies can now can be damaged by both. Punishment now causes cursed enemies to grant a buff to any to anyone they hit with melee attacks. The buff grants more melee damage and increased attack speed. It no longer reflects damage. 
Arctic armor now chills enemies when they hit you. It causes you to drop chilled ground only while moving, and take a percentage less fire damage and physical damage while stationary. It will reserve mana instead of draining mana, and no longer reduces damage taken by a flat amount. Tempest Shield now deals arcing beams of damage to attackers when you block. This damage chains between enemies, and now has a mana cost and a duration instead of a reservation cost. Blocking refreshes the skill's duration. Due to these changes, it, is, it no longer persists between areas. Blood Rage now deals physical damage over time than Chaos, and grants increased attack speed and life leech for the duration of the buff, regardless of the state of the player's life. The leech values are now in line with the game-wide rebalance of leech, and now also drains a percentage of physical damage based on energy shield, on top of life, and now has a 25% chance to generate a frenzy charge on kill. Enduring Cry is now a war cry rather than a spell. It grants some life regeneration on use, and grants a 3% area effect per one quality. Frostwall now has a cooldown that can be bypassed by consuming power charges. Its damage, duration, and wall length have been greatly modified. Enlighten now reduces its mana multiplier each level. It no longer grants increased experience for linked gems. It instead serves to lower mana costs and reservation. Reduced mana no longer reduces reservation costs of supported gems. It now only lowers the casting cost of skills. When you complete a quest, gems from that quest plus some others are added into a new tab on the jewelry vendor in town for you to purchase cheaply. These gems sometimes come with experience if they're lower level than you are. Introduced the Fortify buff, which is granted by the Fortify Support Gem and Vigilant Strike. This buff is designed to protect melee characters and grants 20% reduced damage taken from hits for a few seconds. We've added 18 new achievements. New 3D art has been added to the following uniques. Alternate art, Terran Shiver, Bloodthorn, Vito's Kitchen Knife, Alternate art, Vito's Kitchen Knife, and Hegemony's Era. The Nightmare tier of weapons have all had their 2D and 3D art replaced. New types of chests have been added to the first three acts. A Gemling Legionnaire monster packs have been added to the Warehouse District in Act 3. Added a new unique boss to the church in the Fell Shrine Ruins. The voice acting of existing character classes has been improved, or in the case of the Duelist, destroyed. In some cases, this involved very large changes, like in the Duelist, where it was destroyed. Large skeletons now have their own models and animations, as opposed to being upsized variants of normal skeletons. They now attack slower, but hit harder than normal skeletons. More lore objects with voice acting have been added throughout Rayclast. A swarm of parasites have infected some very large crustaceans and found their way to the coast of Rayclast in Act 1. We've added new puncture animations for all player characters. Continue to incrementally improve the sound, art, effects, and environments. Achievement changes. As well as adding new achievements, we've updated and revamped several existing ones. The achievements All Ears, No Loose Ends, No Stone Unturned, and Locomancer have been expanded and revamped. They now incorporate Act 4 content, as well as some of the new content from added from pre to previous acts. Players who have completed any of these achievements before this update will keep them, even though they haven't done the new content required for them. We may expand these achievements again later, but no one will ever lose an achievement once they have earned it, now or in the future. All of these achievements now show your current character's progress towards them, instead of your account's best progress. Once you've completed them, they are simply marked as complete, no matter what character you are playing. Locomancer now includes the Act 4 waypoints. All Ears now includes Act 4 NPC dialogue and is broken up by Act. No Loose Ends now includes the Act 4 side quest and is broken up by difficulty. No Stone Unturned is now broken up by Act. Many new pieces of environmental lore are included, such as the Vol Letters found in Corrupted Areas, as well as content in Act 4 and earlier Acts. For achievements broken up by an act or difficulty, the progress of each is tracked individually, to make it easier to follow your progress. This also means that these achievements are no longer required to be done by a single character, though each individual act or difficulty must be. Content from the Torment slash Bloodlines Challenge Leagues 
Tormented spirits have been added to the core game. Bloodlines mods have been added to the core game. The Bloodlines mod's Phylactral Link is no longer used as a Bloodlines mod, but the mechanic may be reused in other places. The Bloodlines mod Cult of the Elements has been removed. The Bloodlines mod Otherworldly has had its duration reduced, and now has a less damage reduction. The Bloodlines mod, the Bloodline mods, Void Spawn of Abaxith, Congealed Blood, and Bearers of the Guardians now spawn less frequently. The Elementals spawned by Living Blood Bloodlines mod has been rebalanced. The Bloodlines mod Necrovigil now appears later than before and has had its radius reduced. One of the variations of the Bloodlines mod, Heralds of the Obelisks, has been removed. The Torment Spirit Tormented Martyr has been made significantly less dangerous. None of the unique items from Torment or Bloodlines drop in the core game. Zana mods can help you find these. Chapter 3 Game Rebalance General Balance The invulnerability grace period when loading into an area has been increased to 30 seconds. In addition to being unable to die, traps cannot, now cannot be damaged at all until they arm. Damage reflection mods on rare monsters are no longer auras. There are two new monster t mods that reflect physical and elemental damage respectively. They have new effects that are much more visible. A Bloodlines mod has been added for pack-based reflection on magic monsters. War Cries are now a category of skills containing the, containing the existing Enduring Cry and the new Abyssal and Rallying Cries. War Cries have a shared cooldown. Projectile skills no longer, quote, shotgun, quote. You can't hit the same target with more than one simultaneously created projectile from the same source anymore. They've been rebalanced around this. The life of totems cast by players is an increase in all cases. Totem placement can now be sped up with a new totem placement speed stat. Cast speed no longer places totems more quickly. Base totem placement is faster than cast speed used to be. The delay on energy shield recovery has been shortened. The rate at which energy shield recovers has been slowed. Eldritch battery now causes energy shield to protect light mana instead of life. Armor now protects you more than it did before, approximately 18% more protection. Frenzy charges now grant 4% increased attack speed and cast speed. They also grant 4% more damage. Previously, the most that experience could be penalized to was 2% of monsters' normal experience. This value has been reduced to 1%. This is to encourage players to run content appropriate for their high level. Missions now award slightly less reputation and favor. This change is larger for higher level missions. The 1.3.0 patch made master leveling too easy. Hmm. Less favor for masters. Interesting. A leech on weapons is now local. It doesn't affect your other weapon. Barrels now deal damage when they explode. Barrels now deal damage when they explode. Hmm. That's something out of Diablo 1. Side content... Oh, side content and content introduced in previous leagues is now introduced at a staggered rate, and at lower rates early on. The intent here is to avoid overwhelming uh, newer players with too many mechanics too quickly. Fire shrines, static shrines, and he hexing shrines will no longer spawn. Shrine effects now last 45 seconds. Many shrine effects have, been, have also been rebalanced. Quest Rewards Due to the rebalancing of the levels of all skills and support gems, quest rewards throughout Path of Exile have been adjusted. Skill gems are now only offered as quest rewards in normal difficulty. The skills offered at each reward have been consolidated, and skills are no longer offered multiple times. These gems and, other ge and others appear in gem vendors, so they're, more, so they're available later on if you need them. Support gems are now only offered in normal and cruel. They're now available when you enter the lower prison, rather than at, rather than at the caverns before Merveil. Multiple rare items have been, ad have been added to the quest rewards over all three difficulties, including rare jewels in later difficulties. Normal items with four linked sockets have been added to quest rewards in Merciless. Special unique jewels have been added to the quest rewards in all difficulties, from the Golden Hand quest. The banner reward has been rewards have been adjusted. These now grant normal Creighton. 10% to elemental resistance, normal Alira, 60 to max mana, 
Cruel Oak, 16% physical damage, and Cruel Alira, 5% increased cast speed. Any quests which now give you maps have been adjusted to give the new version of those maps. Changes to Leech. We love life leech mechanics, the idea of turning an offensive attack into a defensive form of survivability by absorbing some measure of that damage as life is both thematically interesting and adds depth to the character and gear choices, but leech has always posed some balance issues. Especially against bosses, where often minimal investment resulted in equally strong recovery as it did against large packs of monsters. We made these changes with the goal of keeping leech an impactful mechanic when you need it the most when you're getting swarmed, and to reward players who want to invest deeply to make it work in smaller number of targets too. Multiple leech effects now stack. A single hit against a multiple targets grants multiple effects, as do multiple hits against a single target. The speed at which you leech has been substantially reduced for both life and mana, with less of a reduction to mana leech rate, bringing it in line with life leech rate. These now default to 2% of maximum life per second. It can be increased. A maximum leech cap leech rate cap caps the rate at which you can leech. It's set at 20% of max life or mana per second. Methods of improving leech, leech rate, and increasing your maximum leech rate have been added to new clusters in the passive skill tree, primarily in the regions between the Marauder, Duelist, and Ranger. Some of the already existing clusters in this region that specialized in specific weapon types have also had leech mechanic elements added to them. All existing values of leech have been substantially reduced, including values on existing items. Vol Pact now no longer reduces the amount of life leeched. It has also been moved to between the Shadow and Ranger on the passive skill tree. Some things, such as Support Gems and Warlord's Mark, have had their values brought in line with, other, with the other leech changes. Previously, we had modifiers for increased or reduced life and mana leech rate. These did two things. They increased the amount of life and mana you, you're gaining per second for each leech effect, and they reduced the duration of each leech effect, such that the total life and mana gained over the duration remain the same. All such modifiers have been changed to increased or reduced life slash mana leeched per second. This still increases the value of life and mana you're gaining per second for each effect, exactly as it did before. It no longer affects the duration of the leech effects meaning you'll gain more total life and mana from each one as a result. At zero's acuity no longer applies a penalty to leech. To provide incentives for players to invest in a particular type of elemental damage, um, or specific status ailment, we have modified the durations for freeze, shock, and chill. Freeze, shock, and chill now last for 60 milliseconds for every 1% of life dealt by the appropriate element, up to a maximum of 50%. When frozen, you are able, you are also chilled for the freeze duration of plus 300 milliseconds. Previously, this value was 30% of the freeze duration, but that was sometimes too short or too long. Passive tree and keystone rebalance. The general layout and padding of the entire tree has been tweaked to accommodate the new jewel system. 21 jewel sockets have been added to the passive tree. The Scion dual attribute nodes have been replaced by jewel nodes. The starting Scion nodes now have plus 5 to an attribute to compensate. No passives grant increased buff effect anymore. The Duelist and Marauder parts of the tree have been significantly reworked. Passives that affect totems have been reworked. Bur burn duration and ignite chance values have been reduced across the tree. Burn damage values have also been lowered. Energy shield recovery passives have also have been reworked to better suit the new state of energy shield. Ondar's Guile has been renamed Arrow Dancing, and now grants 40% more chance to evade projectile attacks, but 20% less chance to evade melee attacks. There are very powerful increased life nodes behind blood magic now, since more blood equates to more magic. Eldritch Battery no longer converts your energy shield to mana. Instead, your energy shield now protects your mana. It will regenerate after a period just as before, and it will not be affected by anything that specifically affects mana. Many clusters have been reviewed and had minor changes made. Added several cl new clusters of passives, including clusters for Fortify and Leech. Monster Balance. Monster life and damage has been increased at all levels. 
Path of Exile has been made more challenging in general. Additionally, the power curve of monsters has been readjusted because players receive more tools to enhance their builds early in the game. Minions and totems have had their life and damage readjusted in line with monster life and damage. Monster skills have had a full balance pass, with most having some level of damage change. Monsters are now less inclined to attack minions when there are, min when there are players nearby to attack. Monsters stick to their packs more while walking around and don't spread out so thinly. Some monsters, like Devourers, can no longer spawn from strong boxes. Map bosses have been rebalanced. They now have extra life and item drops. The Shore and Dry Peninsula map bosses have now use more skills. Hmm. Rather than always fleeing, Humanoids and Blood Chieftains now flee if they are ignited while on low life. Rather than always fleeing, Monkeys and Drop Bears, they actually call them Drop Bears. Interesting. Now flee when they have been ignited with an ignite dealing more than 10% of their maximum life per second. Monsters that cast curses which lower player resistances should now do so less frequently. The curses now lower resistances less in normal and cruel difficulties. Rogue Exiles now no longer reduce the effect of player curses cast on them. Map bosses, meanwhile, reduce the effect of player curses cast on them even more than before. <laughs> Many bosses with certain projectile skill variants, such as barrage or spiral skills, now deal less damage with those projectiles at close range, and are now less likely to use those skills at close range in general. Caliga, Imperatrix, should now be more visible in the Scepter of God. Her rate at laying traps has been reduced. Hmm, no more machine gun traps interesting change. Devourers now do less damage when ambushing you. Devourers implementing Ursae now spawn with some of their group submerged and some emerged. This change was done to prevent the large amount of burst damage they could deal, causing unfair deaths regularly. Many monster lightning skills now have less damage variants. Interesting. Many rogue exiles have been rebalanced. Shrapnel Bear's damage has been toned down. Good fucking god. Soul Conduit no longer appears on monsters which have their corpses deleted on death. While rebalancing maps around the other changes in the Awakening and the new series of massive improved mods, we've set out a few specific goals. We want to try to kill we want people to try and to, to kill the map bosses. We want people to find it straightforward to get out of lower maps. It's important that players feel progress and a sense of mastery as they learn to roll maps properly and improve their characters. We want it to be main hard to maintain the top maps. Their content for elite players and the rarity reflects it. We want top maps to be challenging for even the best players. Top maps with difficult mods are the hardest content in Path of Exile and should be the goals for mo our most skilled players. For the end of Merciless Act 4, to approach the challenge and reward of mid-tier maps. Oh, for, oh, for the end of Merciless Act 4 to approach the challenge and reward of mid-tier maps. Please see the new map content section above for information on the 12 new maps, new map progression, and new map mod system in the Awakening. The relevant chances of finding maps within maps has been adjusted. There are now three bands of maps that have different difficulties to ascend. The lowest tier maps, 68 to 73, yield higher maps relatively easily. The mid-tier maps, 74 to 78, require more effort to get high maps from. You need to roll high quantity maps, pack size, and take risks to maximize your map yield. The highest tier maps, 79 to 82, are unforgiving and not designed to be sustained constantly. Substantial skill and planning is required to experience this content. To accommodate the growing skill and knowledge of Path of Exile's best players, Content in the highest tier maps has been made more challenging. Map, map bosses have also been increased in difficulty, but drop more items than before. Each map boss also has a 20% flat chance to drop an additional map. This does not apply multiple times for maps that have multiple bosses, nor does it double up when a map boss is twin. Map bosses are the only way to get a map that is two levels above the area you're in. Magic and rare monsters can drop maps that are one level above the area you're in. Bonus unique monsters, such as rogue exiles, cannot drop maps. 
As the sweeping balance changes have had an impact on existing Grandmasters, the Hall of Grandmasters map will only have one wing as we check and modify the state of each Grandmaster where needed. Corrupting a map to a higher tier now selects the resulting map at random. Plummeting Ursae now spawn in maps, sometimes above maps. Oh, corrupt- oh. The Dried Lake map has been renamed the Arid Lake, as the Dried Lake is currently a zone in Act 4. Strong Box Balance the chance of finding a strong box has been decreased. The chance of finding a unique strong box has been increased. Huh. Unique strong boxes are now able to be found. Chemist strong boxes can no longer spawn. Quantity mod bonuses on strong boxes are now 30 to 40 percent, down from 50 to 60 percent. The additional magic item mods on corrupt on carto oh, cartographer's strong boxes is now always one, instead of one to two. The additional Normal Items mod on Cartographer's Strong Boxes is now, is now 1 to 2 instead of 2 to 3. Cartographer's Strong Boxes can no longer mirror items. Cartographer's Strong Boxes have become less frequent as you progress up the map tiers. They have not been added to the new 80 plus maps. The overall drop rate of unique items has been increased. Eternal Orbs no longer drop in any league. Low level items are now more likely to have on color sockets. Lower level items now have more sockets and more linked sockets. Base weapon type rebalance. To broaden the number of choices players have when choosing their weapon, we have flattened out attack speed across all weapon types. In general, the slowest weapons are now faster, and the fastest weapons are now slower than they were before. We've also increased the chance to, cr to critically strike for some weapon types, which should allow for critical strike builds on more than just a handful of weapons. Weapons with the lowest and highest attack speeds have been moved closer to the median. Critical's critical strike chance has been reworked on all weapons. It is no longer coupled with intelligence requirement as tightly as it was. Most weapon types now have a higher critical strike chance option in their sequence. Two-handed weapon type, two-handed melee weapons have been gen, have generally been reduced in damage relative to one-handed equivalents in the early to mid game. Damage on wands have has been increased in general. Claws have had many of their Leech Implicit mods changed to Life Gain on Hit. The Marikov Bow has been renamed the, to Assassin Bow. Life and Mana Flask Rebalance. Mana Flasks now consume fewer charges per use and restore less mana per use. Players needed more control over how and when they restored mana, and how often they gained the benefits of flasks. Giving Mana Flasks more uses gives players more control. Life Flasks now restore more life. Flasks have had their level requirement adjusted. Life and mana flasks can generally be equipped earlier. Hail Rake will now always drop no Hail Rake will now always drop a life or mana flask. Interesting change. Existing unique item rebalance. As well as adding more uniques at a simple at a single time than we've done before, in preparation for the launch of the Awakening, our design team has gone through every unique item in the game. They've taken a careful look at where each one stands among other items and whether it pr properly fulfills its role. In a game that has grown as much as Path of Exile over the past few years, it's expected, to not, it, it's expected that not every item holds up as well as it once did. Where we found that to be true, we've made changes. Please note that uh, unless otherwise stated, these changes will only occur upon using a Divine Orb on an existing item, or upon picking up a new one in the Awakening. In addition to mod and value changes, many unique Many uniques have had their drop levels and relative rarities changed to better fit their power level or position in the game. Calm Sign. Removed Life Leech from Physical Attack mod. Added Life Gain on Hit mod. Divine Orbs cannot be used to acquire these new changes. Silver Branch. Increased the local physical damage mod to 80 to 100%. Ephemeral Edge. Increased IPD to 150%. Malachi Simula. No longer increases the cost of skills. The Searing Touch now appears in a lappy base type, making this much higher level. Hyrie's Ire no longer grants acrobatics. Add a new mod for dodge chance at 10%. Add a new mod for spell dodge chance at 10%. Divine Orbs cannot be used to acquire these changes. Hrimnor's Resolve. Fire damage mod increased to 30 to 40%. Armor mod increased to 100 to 120%. 
Chevron's Pace. In intelligence mod increased to 20 to 30. Energy shield mod increased to 100 to 140 percent. Meganord's Girdle. Physical damage mod reduced to 5 to 15 added physical damage. Ambu's Charge. Armor and energy shield mod increased to 180 to 220 percent. All resist mod increased to 15 percent. Rhyme Gaze. Cold damage mod increased to 30 percent. Moon Sorrow. Increased local physical damage mod increased to 175%. Prism Guardian. Now grants plus 2 to the level of aura gem socketed in this item. Spring Leaf. Reduced the life regeneration on low life to 5%. Added a new mod for 1% life regeneration. Divine orbs cannot be used to acquire this change. Sintrek. Energy shield mod increased to 70 to 100%. Per to 100. Dark Scorn. Added physical damage mod increased to 10 to 15 to 15 to 20. Terran's Shiver. Spell damage mod increased to 50 to 60 percent. The Supreme Truth. Increased experience gain mod reduced to 3 percent. The Covenant. Energy shield mod increased 280 to 320 percent. At Ziri's Mirror. Added a new mod for 50 percent reduced curse duration on you. Divine orbs cannot be used to acquire this change. Storm Cloud. Increased local added lightning damage mod to eight to one to eighty-five. Chernobog's Pillar. And Feeble on Hit mod increased to ten percent chance. Added a new mod for ten to twenty-five of added fire damage. Divine orbs cannot be used to acquire this new mod. Nikta's Lantern. Added a new mod for 150 to 200 percent increased local physical damage. Divine Orbs cannot be used to acquire this change. Bronze Live. Added a new mod for 35 to 50 increased damage with movement skills. Divine Orbs cannot be used to acquire this change. Ice Tomb. Strength mod increased to 30 to 40. Intelligence mod increased to 30 to 40. Al Dihi. Increased local physical damage mod increased to 100 to 120%. Lightbane Riment. Physical to Chaos Conversion mod increased to 30%. Congor's Undying Rage. Added local physical damage mod increased to 56 to 400. Parandus Signet. Increased experience gained mod reduced to 2%. Increased intelligence per unique equipped mod reduced to 2%. Wind Ripper. Increased rarity mod reduced to 30%. Increased quantity mod reduced to 15%. Increased local critical strike chance mod reduced to 60 to 80 percent. Death's Oath. The debuff applied upon killing an enemy now only lasts three seconds. Wings of Entropy. Increased local physical damage mod increased to 100 to 120 percent. Dusk Toe. Now appears on a higher base type, type tier. Iron scale boots. Divine orbs cannot be used to acquire this change. D. Duedra's Elixir. Increased flask charges used increased to compensate for base mana flask charges, charges changing. It now consumes 100 to 120 to 150% increased flask charges. Brisk wrap. Increased dexterity percentage to 15%. Sybil's paw. Increased spell damage per 5% block increased to 8% per 5% block. The Screaming Eagle. Local added physical damage mod increased. It's now 10 to 15 to 25 to 30. Dying Breath. The radius of the auras has been increased to 75, to be the same as the Leer cast. Black Gleam. Physical damage converted to fire damage mod is now always 50%. Doom Fletch. Added a new mod for added local physical damage at 8 to 12 to 16 to 20. No. Hyon's Fury. Local added lightning damage mod increased to 1 to 550 to 650. Sybil's Lament. Reduced rarity mod increased to negative 20 to negative 10 item rarity. Jaws of Agony. Power charge on trap throw chance increased to 25%. Mark of the Doubting Knight. Increased local physical damage mod increased to 210 to 240%. Dream Feather. Added local physical damage mod increased. It's now 20 to 40 to 55 to 70. Cherubim's Maleficence. Life Leech Rate Mod increased to 100%. Mary Lean's Fallacy. 
non-critical strike damage increased to 40%, less critical strike chance increased to 40%. Nomix Storm. Physical damage taken mod is now 20%. Mjolnir. Or Mjolnir. Chance to cast socketed lightning skills reduced to 30%. Azuri's Acuity. Now has no leech penalty. This change affects all copies of this item. Infernal Mantle. Now drops on the Widow Silk Robe base type. The increased physical oh, item mod balance. The increased physical damage mods on weapons have been rebalanced and many have many and many have new ranges. The first mod, Heavy, is more impactful early on. A high level mod, Merciless, has been added. The increased physical damage of the hybrid increased physical damage and accuracy mods has been generally reduced. A high level mod, Dictators, has been added. Life mods have had their sequence extended at both ends. The old level 1 mod, Healthy, has been moved to level 5. A new level 1 mod, Hail, has been added, as a high level Rapturous mod. Oh, as is a high level Rapturous mod. Most local added elemental damage mods on weapons have been increased. Added spell damage mods can now spawn on some weapons. They add flat elemental damage of certain elements to your skills. The new item levels required for life leech mods are Remoras, 50, Lampreys, 60, Vampires, 70. The new item levels required for mana leech mods are Thirsty, 50, Parched, 70. Corruption mods for elemental life leech on amulets now require item level 50. We've added some new mods. Their names, values, and required item levels are Of the Gods, 50 to 51 to 55 Strength. Of the Winds, 51 to 55 Dexterity. Of the Genius, 51 to 55 Intelligence. Rapturous, 110 to 119 Life. Also, Shields and Amulets can roll higher life mods now. Zaffir, 67 to 73 Mana. Dictators, 75 to 79 percent physical damage and 135 to 169 accuracy. Merciless, 170 to 179 physical damage. Impregnable, 121 to 132 energy shield. Unassailable, 121 to 132 percent armor. Mirages, 121 to 132 percent evasion. Legends, 121 to 132 percent armor and evasion. Inspired, 121 to 132 percent armor and energy shield. Illusory, 121 to 132 percent evasion and energy shield. Vaporous, 151 to 170 evasion. For rings, encased, 401 to 460 armor. For belts, dazzling, 48 to 51 energy shield. Amulets and belts only. Runic, spell damage. Liches, spell damage and mana. Overpowering, 37 to 42 percent weapon elemental damage. Parandises, 25 to 28 percent item rarity. Malicious, local added chaos damage. Of finesse, 23 to 25 percent cast speed, weapons only. Of zichiosh, 46 to 48 percent fire resistance. Of host, 46 to 48 percent cold resistance. Of a fidge. 46 to 48 percent lightning resistance of Bameth, 31 to 35 percent chaos resistance of the Gale, 42 to 46 percent projectile speed of the Assassin, 321 to 360 accuracy of Renown, 14 to 16 percent attack speed, extended to bows and wands. The lowest tier of increased critical strike chance for spells has had its values decreased by 1% on both ends of the range to avoid overlap with the next tier up. Well, what was... ah... Master Crafted Mods. Many of the lower tier Master Crafted Mods have been made much more affordable. Many of the highest tier Master Crafted Mods have been made much more expensive. Added increased spell damage as a crafting option for daggers at Katarina. Added new mods for increased spell damage and for staves at Katarina. Haku's All Attributes mod for gloves now requires a higher master level. 
Master mods are now consistent with the changes to other mods, such as Leech. Katarina can now craft added damage for spells on a range of weapons. Crafting meta mods that were priced in Eternal Orbs have been repriced. Zana's Onslaught Map Device mod now requires that she is level 4. You can try Bloodlines and Torment through Zana's Map Device when she has reached levels 2 and 5, respectively. Skill and Support Gem Rebalance we reviewed every skill and support gem in preparation for the Awakening, and made sweeping changes to the levels and stats of many skills. The goal was to provide a smoother leveling experience for new players, and to ensure that skill and support gem options made sense of the levels that became available. The majority of skill and support gems have had their level requirement changed. Be sure to check skills on old characters before you head into combat. We've also reviewed and normalized the damage effectiveness on all, of all spells. There should no longer be massive differences in the amount of real damage that added damage modifiers and ge gems grant to spells. Player-friendly auras no longer check line of sight. Minions and allies behind pillars now get the full benefit of auras. Animate Guardian. The Guardian's base survivability has been increased by 50%, and now deals additional physical damage. Arc. Damage reduced slightly at all levels. At player level 68, it should deal approximately 8% less damage. Arctic Breath. Explosion area increased to 12. The radius of the chilled ground left by the explosion now matches the radius of the explosion. Ball Lightning. Base radius increased by 33%, from 12 to 16. Damage reduced. At player level 68, it should, it should deal approximately 24% less damage. Bear Trap now grants 1% increased physical damage per 1% quality. Cleave. Damage dealt while dual wielding reduced to 60% for each weapon. Base damage increased by 10%. Cold Snap. Quality now increases... Uh, quality now instead increases area of effect by 0.5 for 1% and no longer affects freeze or chill duration. Cyclone. Reduced the mana cost at all levels and now grants 0.5% increased area of effect radius per 1% of quality was 1% per 1% quality. Detonate dead. Radius of the explosion increased by 12.5%. Discharge. Damage increased at, low, at lower levels, and now deals 0.5% increased area of effect radius per 1% of quality. Was 1% per 1 quality. Dominating blow. Minions deal 20% less damage at level 1, with the penalty reduced at each gem level. Base duration set to, to 20 seconds at all levels. Mana cost reduced at all levels, and now grants 0.5% increased damage per 1% quality instead of affecting duration. Dual Strike. Now grants 0.5% increased attack speed per 1% quality instead of increased critical strike chance. Devouring Totem. Reduce the mana cost at all levels, and now lasts 8 seconds at all levels. Devouring Totem now increases totem life by 1% for 1 quality. Elemental Hit. Now has base chance to inflict elemental status ailments. Ethereal Knives. Now grants 1% increased projectile speed per 1% quality instead of increased projectile damage. Fireball. Damage increased by 15%. It now has a base chance to ignite. Its projectile speed has been increased by 30%. Firestorm. Had a very slight damage buff. Area of effect explosions increased by 11%. 9 to 10. And now grants 1% area damage per 1 quality, instead of reduced delay between fireballs. Flame Surge. Surge width increased by 20%. Cast time reduced to 500 to milliseconds from 800 milliseconds. Damage reduced by 25% to compensate for the cast speed increase. The net result is more damage overall, though. Flame Totem. Now adds additional projectiles to spray as it levels up. Totem life is increased, and now increases totem life by 1% per 1 quality. Flame Blast now grants 1% increased area damage per 1 quality. It no longer works with Spell Echo. Flicker Strike. Damage re base damage increased by 4%. The increased attack speed has been removed, and, in and instead Flicker Strike grants 20% more attack speed. It now increases attack speed by 1% per 1 quality instead of increased critical strike chance. Freezing Pulse. Damage increased by 25% to compensate for the shotgunning mechanic change. Frenzy now deals point now deals five percent increased projectile damage per frenzy charge at all levels. Quality now grants 05 percent increased attack speed per one percent. Quality value is no longer affected by frenzy charges. Glacial Cascade 
base cast speed reduced to 800 milliseconds from 850 milliseconds, added an additional sequence to the effect, increasing the total length, it now grants 1% increased area damage per one quality. Glacial Hammer, base damage increased by 7.5%. Chance to freeze is now 25% across all levels. Heavy Strike, now grants 1% increased stun duration per one quality. Ice Nova, damage increased by up to 20% at all levels. Base cast time reduced to 900 milliseconds. It now grants 0.5% increased air effect per one quality. Ice Shot, now increases cold damage by 1% per 1% quality. Ice Spear, now grants 2% increased projectile, spear, projectile speed per one quality. Incinerate, damage increased by 65% to compensate for the shocking mechanic change. Infernal Blow, base damage increased by 4%, from 125 to 130% of base damage, and now grants 0.5% increased air effect radius per 1% of quality, was 1% per 1% of quality. The explosion effect can no longer reflect damage to the player. Leap Slam, increase the mana cost from 15 to 18 and standardize the knockback chance at to 20% at all levels. The maximum range has been reduced from 70 to 60, and Leap Slam can no longer be supported by Multi-Strike, and now grants 0.5% increased knockback chance per one quality, instead of increased stun duration. Lightning Arrow, base damage increased by 14%, from 70 to 80% base damage. Radius of the lightning effect increased by 12.5% from 16 to 18. It now grants 0.5% increased chance to shock per one quality, instead of increased shock duration. Lightning Strike, now grants 2% chance to pierce per one quality, was 3% per one quality. Lightning Tendrils, damage reduced by 25% and area of effect reduced by 18% from 26 to 22. Lightning Trap, we doubled the damage at all levels, we've also reduced its mana cost to higher levels. Lightning Warp, reduced the mana cost slightly at all levels, and now grants 1% increased cast speed per one quality. Molten Shell, greatly reduced the mana cost, and now grants 1% chance to ignite per one quality. Was 1.5% per one quality. Molten Strike, now grants 1% increased fire damage per one quality. Was 0.75% per one quality. Poison Arrow, reduced the mana cost across all levels, and now grants 0.5% increased area of effect, radius per one quality. Power Siphon now grants 1% increased damage per one quality. Puncture now grants 1% increased skill effect duration per one quality. Rain of Arrows, base damage increased by 13%, area of effect increased by 22% across all levels, but no longer grants increased area of effect per gem level and now grants 1% increased area damage per 1% quality instead of increased attack speed. Raise Spectre. Now grants 1% increased minion movement speed per 1 quality. Was 1.5% per 1 quality. Reeve. Duration on Reeve increased to 3 seconds from 2. The maximum number of stacks you can obtain is now 4. It now defaults to your auto attack if you don't have enough mana to use Reeve. Righteous Fire. Now grants 1% increased spell damage per 1 quality was 0.75% per 1% quality. Searing Bond. Skill duration reduced to 8 seconds. It now increases totem life by 1% per 1% quality. Shield Charge. The end animation now scales with attack speed. Thank god. Shield Charge can no longer be supported by multi-strike. Damage at high... Damage at maximum range has been increased, but the sun duration has been decreased across the board. It now grants 1% increased damage per 1 quality. Shockwave Totem. Now increases totem life by 1% per 1 quality. Hmm. The knockback chance has been reduced to 25% from 100%. <sighs> Spark. Damage increased by 76%, and now grants 2% increased projectile speed per 1% quality. Split Arrow. Fires four additional projectiles at level one, and fires an one additional projectile for every four, every four gem levels. Static Strike. Now grants 0.5% increased area effect per 1% of quality. Was 0.75. The variance between minimum and maximum damage has been lowered. Um, Storm Call. Area of effect increased by 14%.
mana cost increased at higher levels. It now grants 1% increased critical strike chance per 1% quality. Summon Skeletons. No longer deals less elemental damage, but now has damage effectiveness of 50%. Area of effect increased by 20%. Oh, sweep. Area of effect increased by 20%, and no longer knocks enemies back beyond the max radius. Sweep. Really? Is sweep usable now? It no longer knocks enemies back past the max radius. It's defensive. And yet offensive. Sweep is now affected by a weapon speed, but has less attack speed modifier. It now grants 0.5% increased area of effect radius per 1% of quality instead of increased attack speed. It now works with all two-handed melee weapons. Tornado Shot now grants 1% increased projectile damage per 1 quality. Whirling Blades skill speed increased by 29%. Temporal Chains mana cost reduced at all levels. Area of effect increased per gem level, reduced. But the base area of effect has been increased by 37.5%. Duration increases per level, slightly modified. The end result is slightly longer duration of level 1, but slightly shorter duration of level 20. Vol Flame Blast, damage reduced by approximately 10%. Vol Lightning Trap, damage increased by 33%. Vol Storm Call, damage increased by 20%. Vol Reeve, the maximum number of stacks is now 8. Elemental Weakness. Mana cost reduced at all levels. Area of effect increased per gem level. Replace. Reduced. But the base area of effect has been increased by 37.5%. And now grants 0.25 reduced elemental resistances on cursed enemies per 1% quality. Warlord's Mark. Mana cost reduced at all levels. Area of effect increased per gem level reduced, but the base area of effect has been increased by 37.5. Normalize the increased duration per gem level. Mana cost... Oh, and people. Mana cost reduced at all levels. The reduced critical strike chance and critical strike multiplier effects are now 25% at all levels. Area of effect increased, increases per gem level reduced, but the base area of effect has been increased. It now grants 0.5% reduced critical strike chance and accuracy on cursed players per 1% quality instead of just critical strike chance. Ugh. Assassin's Mark. Mana cost reduced at all levels. Area of effect increases per gem level reduced, but the base area of effect has been increased by 37.5%. Normalize the, increases dur the increased duration per gem level. Projectile weakness. Pierce chance is now 50% at all levels. Knockback chance is now 25% at all levels. Mana cost reduced at all levels. Area of effect increases per gem level reduced, but the base area of effect has been increased by 37.5%. Normalize the increased duration per gem level, and now grants 0.5% chance to pierce enemies per 1% quality. Vulnerability. Mana cost reduced at all levels. Area of effect increases per gem level reduced, but the base area of effect increased by 37.5%. Normalize the increase the increased duration per gem level. Flammability, frostbite, and conductivity. Resistance, resi resistance reduction increased by 5% at all levels. Mana cost reduced at all levels. Area of effect increases per gem level reduced, but the base area of effect has been increased by 37.5%. Normalize the increased duration per gem level. Flammability now grants 0.5% increased burn duration on cursed enemies per 1% quality. Poacher's Mark now grants significantly more life on hit at higher levels. Mana cost reduced at all levels. Area of effect has been increased. Yada yada yada. Normalize the increased duration per gem level. Anger. Now adds flat fire damage to fire spells. Wrath. Grants more lightning damage to lightning spells. Oh, grants X percent more lightning damage. Clarity. Reduce the cost and amount of mana regeneration it grants at all levels. Of all clarity. Base duration increased by 2%. Herald of Ash. Radius reduced by 16.5%. And base overkill damage reduced to 80%. Herald of Thunder reduced damage at all levels. Herald of Ice shattering effect no longer reflects damage to the player. Immortal Call consuming endurance charges now grants increased duration instead of upping base duration. Added Fire Damage grants an additional 5% of physical damage added as fire damage at all levels, and now grants 0.5% increased fire damage for 1% quality. Greater multiple projectiles and lesser multiple projectiles. Instead of giving increased projectile damage per level, 
each level now reduces the projectile damage penalty. Faster projectiles. Double the initial damage bonus. The gem still increments damage every two gem levels. Increase the projectile speed bonus at early levels. At very high levels, the bonus is lower. Added cold damage. Increase the added damage at all levels. No longer grants increased chill duration. Now grants 0.5% increased cold damage per 1% quality, instead of increased chance to freeze. Additional accuracy. Now grants 1% increased accuracy per 1% quality, instead of increased critical strike chance. Increased area of effect. Now grants 20% increased area of effect at level 1, up from 14. Quality now grants increased area damage rather than increased area of effect. Added lightning damage. Increase the added damage at all levels. Now grants 0.5% increased lightning damage per 1% quality instead of increased chance to shock and shock duration. Knockback. Now grants 50% increased knockback distance at all levels. Mana Leech. Now grants 2% mana leech at all levels. Higher levels increases the speed of mana leech. Life Leech. Now grants 2% mana le life leech at all levels. Higher levels increase the speed of life leech. Pierce. Base increased pierce chance starts 10% higher, and now grants 0.5% chance to pierce per 1% quality. Trap. Damage multiplier now starts at 20% at 1% at level 1. It now grants 0.5% increased um, trap throwing speed per 1 quality. Item rarity. Increased item rarity now starts at 40% at level 1 of the gem, and increments by 1% per level. Concentrated effect. Now functions multiplicity multiplicatively with other area effect modifiers. In addition, the damage multiplier now starts at 40%, down from 50%. The mana cost multiplier is now 140% rather than 160%, and now grants 0.5% increased area damage for one quality instead of reducing the mana cost. Minion damage. Mana multiplier reduced to 130 from 150%. Damage now starts at 30%, down from 45%, but now acts multiplicatively with other sources. In general, this should be a large boost to minion damage. Increased duration. Mana multiplier reduced to 140 from 150%. Minion speed. Now increases the minion movement at and attack speed and cast speed. Mana multiplier has been reduced to 140 from 150%. Elemental proliferation. Supported skills now deal 30% less damage, with the penalty reduced at periodic gem levels. The radius is now 12 at all levels, and now grants all status ailments 0.5% increased duration per one quality across the board. Blood Magic now grants 0.5% reduced mana cost per 1% quality instead of increased attack speed and cast speed. Culling Strike no longer penalizes attack speed, and now grants 3% increased damage per level. Point Blank no longer penalizes attack speed, instead it grants 2% increased projectile damage per level. And now... Oh. oh, where am I? Culling Strike? Oh yes, point blank. No longer penalizes attack speed. And now grants 0.5% increased projectile damage for 1% quality. Iron Grip. No longer penalizes attack speed. Instead it grants 2% increased projectile damage for, per level. And now grants 0.5% increased projectile damage for 1% quality. Iron Will. No longer penalizes the cast speed. Instead it grants 2% increased spell damage per level. And now grants 0.5% increased spell damage for 1% quality. Spell Totem. Mana Multiplier reduced to 200%. Damage penalty grows smaller per gem level. Totem placement is now accelerated by modifiers to totem placement rather totem placement speed rather than cast speed. Spell totem duration is now 8 seconds at all levels, and now grants 1% increased totem placement speed per 1% quality instead of increased duration. Rejuvenation totem. Increased life recovery at all levels. Totem duration is 8 seconds at all levels, and rejuvenation totem now grants 3% increased aura radius per 1% quality instead of increased totem life. Freeze mine. Mana cost reduced at all levels. Conversion Trap now grants 1% increased skill duration per 1% quality. Chance to Flee now grants 1% chance to flee per 1% quality. Decoy Totem reduced the mana cost at all levels. Now it lasts 8 seconds at all levels. Now it increases totem life by 1% per 1 quality. Blind now grants a 10% chance to blind at all levels. Higher levels now grant an increased blind duration, and now grants 1% increased blind duration per 1% quality. Ranged Attack Totem. Mana Multiplier reduced to 200% from 250%. Damage penalty grows smaller per gym level. Totem Placement Speed is now accelerated by modifiers to Totem Placement Speed rather than Cast Speed. 
Ranged attack totem duration is now 8 seconds at all levels, and now grants 1% increased totem placement speed for 1% quality instead of increased duration. Chain. Damage penalty grows smaller per, per gem level, increased instead of granting increased damage per level. Mana multiplier has been reduced to 150%. Fork. Now grants 1% more damage per level, which is multiplicative instead of the additive increased previously. Mana multiplier has been increased to 130%. Multi-strike. Damage penalty has been reduced to 30% less damage. An attack speed bonus at level 1 has been reduced to 75% increased attack speed. Multi-strike no longer gains increased damage per gen level. Spell totem. Or spell echo. Increased the mana multiplier to 140%. Melee splash. No longer gains increased damage per level. Instead, now grants 1% more damage to the main target and 1% increased damage to the other targets, alternating per level. It now grants 0.5% increased area effect radius per 1% of the quality. Power charge on critical strike. Base, oh, base chance now starts at 35%. It now grants 1% increased critical strike chance per 1% quality instead of further instead of further chance to gain a power charge on critical strike. Increased burning damage. Now grants 0.5% um, increased burning damage per 1% of quality instead of increased chance to ignite. Minion and Totem Elemental Resistance. Now grants 25% to all elemental resistances at level 1, and increments each at every level. And now grants 0.5% to all elemental resistances per 1 quality. Cast on Critical Strike. Level 1 now grants 50% chance to cast the supported skills on crit, and 69% chance at level 20 of the gem. Cast on melee kill. Increased spell damage modifier starts at 40%, and grants 78% increased spell damage at level 20. Multiple traps. Longer grants additional damage, but instead reduce, but instead reduced the damage penalty per gem level. Smoke mine. The initial smoke cloud duration increased to 4 seconds at level 1, and bonus movement speed increased to 30%. Slower projectiles. Now slows projectiles multiplicatively with other projectile slowing effects. Also grants 20% more projectile damage level 1. Reduced duration. Now lowers duration multiplicatively with other duration reducing effects. Cast when stunned. Greatly increase the chance for it to trigger at all levels. Enhance. Reduce the level requirement and experience the level appropriately. It now grants 10% quality at level 2, an additional 5% for each additional level. And now is 150% mana cost multiplier. Enhance. Reduce the level requirement and experience to level appropriately. And now grants 10% quality at level 2, and an additional 5% for each additional level. And now is 150% mana cost multiplier. Enhance. Reduce the level requirement and experience to level up appropriately. And now grants 10% quality at level 2, and an additional 5% for each additional level. And now is 150% mana mul cost multiplier. Enhance. Reduce the level requirement and experience to level up appropriately. It now grants 10% quality at level 2, and an additional 5% for each additional level, and now is 115% mana cost multiplier. Enhance. Reduce the mana level requirement and experience to level appropriately. It now grants 10% quality at level 2, an additional 5% for each additional level. Enhance. Get on with it already! Flesh Offering. The increases to movement, attack, and cast speed now start at 20%. Bone Offering. Now grants life on block for minions while active. Which brings us into PvP balance. The massive list of changes in the Awakening has meant that PvP balance has been shifted significantly. We will be carefully observing PvP over the coming weeks to fully and fully expect to see balance issues discovered. In the meantime, some base level PvP balance changes have been made to address known issues. These values are relative to their core game counterparts. Due to the projectile shocking change, sharp spark and freezing pulse no longer have have a lower damage in addition to the PvP scaling. Molten Strike now deals 20% less damage in addition to the PvP scaling. Glacial Cascade now deals 15% more damage in addition to the PvP scaling. Ball Lightning now deals 10% more damage in addition to the PvP scaling. Cyclone now deals 30% less damage in addition to the PvP scaling. Glacial Hilbert Hammer is now deals 15% less damage in addition to the PvP scaling. Skills supported by Cast on Death deal 85% less damage in addition to the PvP scaling. Skills supported by Cast Damage Taken deal 30% less damage in addition to the PvP scaling. Which brings us into Chapter 4, Bug Fixes. I raise my toast to these. Ah. 
fixed a bug where a full stack of currency items would merge into a new item rather than in an existing stack of the destination currency. Numerous sync problems with many skills in the predictive mode have been fixed. Fixed problems with walkability on and sync around strongboxes. Traps no longer get monsters out of sync. The slash OS command no longer affects other players in the same area. This command is nothing in, lock in lockstep mode. Traps can no longer be used to block choke points. Fixed a bug where applying skin transfers in voided leagues would cause characters to become non-deletable. Performance of particle effects has been substantially increased by suppressing multiple copies of the same effect playing on the same entity at the same time. Minions, or other transitionable effects created by triggered skills, can now transition between areas. Fixed a bug that made it hard to open doors when, master when monsters were near them. Fixed a client crash that could occur when rejoining the game after you were disconnected for performing too many actions. Fixed some performance issues related to chatbox size. Fixed a client crash when changing the webcam size while the webcam preview was showing. Fixed a bug where on-kill flask charges were still awarded in the PvP event that had flask charges disabled. Fixed a bug with conversion trap where it could cause monsters to walk on the spot. Fixed a bug where you could change the selected item in a, in a disabled option using the mouse wheel. Fixed a bug where, corpse where the corpse targeting option wouldn't update until you press the selected key. Fixed a bug where the 40% quality recipe wouldn't work under rare circumstances. Fixed a bug where whispering or inviting a developer to your party from a message they've written in global chat would not work correctly. Blink arrow and mirror arrow will no longer default to the standard attack if they can't be executed. This prevents the this prevents the case where clicking invalid terrain while trying to blink arrow to safely uh, to safety would cause the player to fire a standard um, attack arrow, taking up time while they're under attack. Right? We'll no longer default to standard attack. Uh, if you cast a lightning warp, then die, and resurrect to the checkpoint, the lightning warp no longer completes. Ball lightning now properly checks for spell dodge. Fixed a rare client crash that could occur when moving quickly between hundreds of item descriptions. Fixed problems that would occur when using Raise Spectre on monsters that emerge. The monsters in the Coward's Trial map are now preloaded correctly. You can no longer use slash OS to get to the other side of certain blocking objects. Fixed a bug where you could place totems too far away by holding Shift. You can now tab between stream options and text, text fields. Fixed a bug where vengeance wouldn't trigger if you hit yourself. Fixed a bug where vengeance wouldn't trigger if you hit yourself? Is there a way to actually hit yourself? Interesting. Well, they fixed a bug with it, but apparently you can hit yourself. Hmm, interesting. Fixed various bugs with slash remaining reporting the, remain the remaining monster count. Fixed a bug where some projectile effects would fail to explode after being evaded. Fixed a bug where some bosses that were meant to be reducing the effect of curses on themselves weren't. Fixed a bug where the Alal the Terrifying had too many projectiles under ethereal knives in some difficulties. Fixed an issue where the character panel would not properly display endurance and power charge duration. The special Forsaken Master vendor mods now have appropriate vendor prices. Fixes to visual bugs. Flame Blast, Storm Call, and their Vol equivalents now always appear at the place where the explosions will be. This also fixes problems where they weren't some where they were sometimes invisible. Fixed a bug where the stash wouldn't close correctly when you walked away from it. Life, mana, and energy shield values now regenerate smoothly rather than steeped. Fixed bugs that allowed um, map fragments to be corrupted or master crafted. Mirrored items that are no longer in that are linked in chat now have their art facing the correct direction. The interface for manipulating hideout decorations no longer claims that they can be flipped. Confirmation is no longer required when taking a quest reward, where there is only one option. For example, crafting benches. The hideout symbol is now shown in the map correctly. Guild tags that displayed incorrectly now display correctly. Fixed minor visual issues with the stack count shown on linked items. Fixed a bug with dominating below that could cause permanent UI separator 
to appear until you log out. Fixed two bugs where an item hover would get stuck open. Fixed a bug where the level of effect would rotate the player. Fixed a bug where swapping weapons with an equipped gem could cause display issues with the skill description. Fixed a bug where Lenara's piety could play her death animation twice if killed during her fire or cold form. Information on item drop probabilities can no longer be data mined. Fixed a bug where being teleported within a level could set the environment to an incorrect one. Fixed a bug where mission markers would be shown for monsters or exiles spawned in strong boxes. Um, yes, after a mission had already been finished. Fixed a calculation issue with the estimation of armor against projectile attacks on the player screen. Improved the re rendering of some rotating user interface elements so that they can rotate more smoothly. Maps that are both corrupted and unidentified will now display map is corrupted correctly. The cooldown character audio is no longer played for triggered skills, or when using a charge to bypass cooldown. Fixed a bug where crafting bench costs would show as red, even if you've loaded a stash, stash tab with enough currency to pay for them. Fixed a bug where item hovers would be shown for off items off screen if you moved your mouse to the location outside of the path of exile window where the item would be. Fixed a camera bug that was very that was visible when using flicker strike while zoomed in. Ah, uh, uh, no more space flicker. Fixed a bug where microtransaction tip messages wouldn't appear in chat unless you were in a global channel. Fixed a problem where you could hear some sounds too far away. Acknowledgements. I'd like to thank the rest of our development team for the immense amount of effort they've put in over the last few weeks. We set a release date, and they delivered. I am proud of their talent and the quality of the game that resulted from it. We'd like to thank the Awakening's closed beta testers who provided consistently useful feedback over the last few months. We'd like to thank the people who sent cakes, pizza, and other food to us recently. It fueled a lot of our content creation. We'd like to thank all of our supporters for their generous contributions over the years. Without you, none of this would be possible. Please consider, consider buying or upgrading a supporter pack if you'd like to see more Path of Exile expansions. Finally, I'd like to thank the entire community, regardless of whether you're able to afford to support Path of Exile's development or not. You've made the journey a delight. With your promotion and help, Path of Exile has grown beyond our imagination. Please spread the word about the release. Let's break some records. Lead developer, Chris Wilson. And so concludes the patch 2.00 Path of Exile patch book. Thank you very much for listening, and enjoy your evening. <laughs>